Welcome to the RC Adventure Channel, everybody. This is part seven of the airplane scratch building series. In this video, I'm gonna be covering how to make a one-off fiberglass part. Specifically, I'll be making the cowling for the airplane here, but this same technique should work just fine for the hull of a boat or body of a helicopter or maybe a bunch of other things. Uh, in fact, hey, why don't you take a moment to let me know in the comments down below what you're working on. I'd love to hear about it. To make the mold itself, I'll be using some blocks of white styrofoam. There are a lot of other things that'll work. Just make sure whatever you're using that it's easy to carve and really easy to dig out of the part in the end. You'll see what I'm talking about later on in the video here. Uh, to reinforce the edges of the foam, make sure they don't collapse under vacuum. I've got some balsa wood sheet. For the fiberglass itself, this is some two ounce cloth left over from a canoe build a while back. Uh, if you're going with something bigger than these cowls, you may want to get a, a heavier cloth than, than this, but two ounces should work pretty good for most things. For the epoxy, I've got some West systems here. Now, this epoxy needs to be metered out pretty precisely, and you can do it by weight using a small, cheap kitchen scale like this one. I think this cost me like $10 at Target a few years ago. Then you're going to need something, of course, to put your epoxy in. A Dixie cup works really well. I happen to have this. I think a servo came in this box a while back, but they work pretty decent. Acid brush comes in handy. You're going to want some good sharp scissors. Dull scissors are going to make cutting the fiberglass a pain in the butt. Sharp ones are still kind of a pain, but it's a lot less painful, believe me. And last but not least, something to vacuum it all down in to get all those air bubbles out. I'm, I'm using a food saver because I have it, but there are other things that'll work. So anyway, now that you know what you need, I'm going to stop running my mouth and start building couple of quick notes. In addition to the list of tools I already gave you, you're also going to want something for cutting and shaping the foam. A bandsaw and belt sander work really well, but if you don't have those, you can improvise like you see me doing here. Also, when you're cutting out the fiberglass cloth, if you're making a component with compound curves like I'm doing here, you're going to want to make sure that you bias the weave of the cloth at 45 degrees to the component's center line. That way, the cloth will form around the curves rather than creating wrinkles. But anyway, enough of me talking. Cue the music. And there we go. I think that went together really well. I'm going to let these sit overnight though uh, so the epoxy can fully cure and we'll pull them out of their bags tomorrow and uh, well, fingers crossed everything will be good. <laughs> you 
Yeah, I gotta say that uh, pulling this out of the bag feels a little bit like unwrapping a present on Christmas morning. Uh, don't worry about all the excess epoxy that you see squeezed out the sides. Uh, most of that can get trimmed off with scissors and then you can smooth it out with a sander. Be careful though not to sand all the way through the fiberglass and into, into the foam. Uh, if you do, it's not the end of the world. Uh, you can patch it from the inside, but uh, if you're careful, you should you know, be able to avoid having to patch it in the first place. Once I was happy with the outside of the part, I used the needle nose pliers and the knife blade on my Leatherman's tool to remove the majority of the foam from inside. After that, I switched over to my Dremel tool and used the wire wheel to take out all the foam right down to the fiberglass without running the risk of accidentally going through the fiberglass. Uh, to open up parts like uh, the front where the motor has to come out or the air intake, uh, the cutoff wheel worked well there and then one of the small sanding drums was good for getting down into the corners. And there's the finished product. Now to make these as smooth on the outside as the ones you're used to seeing in the kits, it took quite a bit of bondo and sanding of course. The ones that you're seeing in the kits came out of reusable molds and those molds took anywhere from several weeks to several months to make. Whereas I made both of these cowls in the space of a weekend. As far as the weight goes, yeah, the Bondo does add a little bit to it. But both these cowls are under an ounce each, uh, so that's fairly lightweight. If weight's really an issue for you, then uh, you may want to look into vacuum forming. That's going to be a little bit lighter, but it won't be as durable as the fiberglass. So what do you think? Have you made fiberglass parts before? Do you know a better way of doing this? Uh, if you do, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. If you found this video useful, sure appreciate a thumbs up or a comment. That'll really help feed the YouTube algorithm, which helps me out quite a bit. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to know when the next one's up, that's what the bell icon's for. In the meantime, if you want to see more fun RC content like this, head on over to my Facebook page. There's a link down there in the description that'll take you right to it. And I put all kinds of fun stuff up there. Uh, sometimes it's just little things that don't make it into videos, or it's behind the scenes stuff, or just extra fun RC stuff that I've come across somewhere. But anyway, until next time, remember, best airplanes are the ones you built yourself.